Welcome. Today we're doing the second activity in the Learn to Code conditional code chapter. And this activity is called Using Else If. And last time we learned about the uh, conditional code, uh, like an if statement in Swift, and we learned that you can use that if you need to decide if some code should be run or should it be skipped. And that works great if you have to decide whether a single condition is true or not and run code depending on whether that condition is true or not. But what if there are multiple conditions? What if there's more than one condition? Let's look at this puzzle here, for example. Okay, this puzzle, I'm gonna run the code here. We don't have any code written in here, but we can see the puzzle gets set up here with two gems, a gem in front of us and a gem two in front of us. I'm gonna run the code again. This time it has two switches, a switch right in front of us and a switch two in front of us. Let's run it one more time. This time there's a switch and then a gem. Okay, so the puzzle gets set up randomly each time, and we know there's always going to be two spaces in front of us, but what we don't know is whether there'll be a gem there or a switch there. Okay, so we need to, uh, this is a perfect place to introduce something called an if else if statement. And remember the if statement said if we're on a switch, if we're on a closed switch, we'll toggle it. Here we want to maybe check if we're on a closed switch. Again, we'll toggle it. But if we're on a gem, then we want to grab the gem instead. Okay, so we're going to use this idea of an if and an else if uh, clause attached to it here. So if you look at the example in the instructions here, they have some code that says if is on closed switch is true, then we're going to toggle a switch. Else if we're on a gem, collect gem. Okay, so this is saying while we're at the same location, we can check two different things. We can check if we're on a closed switch and decide what we want to do if we're on the closed switch, which is toggle it. And then we can also check while we're still here, if we're on a gem, then we can collect the gem. All right, so um, let's go ahead and uh, write this code here, at least get started. We know we want to move forward onto the uh, onto the uh, next one and the next space right in front of us. And then here we need to check two conditions. We need to check first. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you do first, but let's do the switch first. So if we're is on a closed switch, then remember the then part comes inside these curly braces. We could do any number of things in here, uh, but really we only need to do one thing if we're on a closed switch, and that's toggle that switch. And then here we want to say else if, check another condition, else if what? Well, else if, sorry, I made a mistake. Else if what condition? If we're is on a gem. This is a new condition here that we can check. Again, it's going to be true if we're if a gem is on that uh, space, or it's going to be false if there is no gem on that space. Okay, so we say else if is on gem, and then we put in here the condition we would like to do if we are on a gem, which is just a collect gem. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and try that. This is only going to take care of the space right in front of us, but it should take care of it under two conditions. One, if either we're on a closed switch or we're on a gem. So let's try this. Okay, this time a switch was placed there. So we move forward, we check if we're on a closed switch, we toggle it. Okay, let's run it again and see if we get a gem this time. And there's a gem. Okay. So it checked if we we're on a closed switch, but we weren't, and then it went through to the next clause and said, else if are we on a gem? If we are, then collect the gem. Okay, so that seems to be working for one space. Now, to do it for the second space, we just want to move forward and do this again, where we say if we're 
And let's switch it around this time. If is on a gem, then we want to collect gem. Okay, else if, and I'm going to show you another way to get the else if clause to show up, a shortcut. If you tap on your if statement here, you get a couple of choices here. One of them is add else if statement right here. So let's choose that. And it adds the else if, else if clause to the, uh, to the instruction. This says else if in the condition we want this time where is on a closed switch, then we want to toggle the switch. Okay, so this should take care of the uh, first square ahead of us, and then we're going to move forward, and that should take care of the second square. All right, let's run this. Okay, we move forward, and we're not on a closed switch, but we are on a gem, so we grab it, and then we move forward, and we're on a closed switch, so we toggle it. Okay, that seemed to work just fine. Um, do want to point out here that uh, we're actually doing the same thing twice here though, right? We're moving forward and then we're doing an if else if statement where we're checking two conditions. One, if we're on a closed switch, then we toggle the switch. Else if we're on a closed or we're on a gem, then we collect the gem. We're doing that same thing twice, so we could also have written this in a loop. Okay? So I'm going to try that. I'm going to delete this and delete this. And let's put this inside a loop. How many times will we want to do these two things? That's right, twice. So let's go ahead and say for i in the sequence 1 to 2. And let's drag these, uh, all this code inside of here. Oops. Okay, there we go. And uh, let's just double check that this all works. So this says two times we want to move forward, check if we're on a closed switch, then toggle it. Otherwise, if we're on a gem, collect the gem, and then go on and move forward and do it one more time. Here we go. Nice. It worked for two switches. Let's run it one more time, see if we can get a gem, and let's step through the code this time. Okay, we've got a loop here. Oh, we still didn't get a gem. I'm gonna stop it and run it again. I wanna get a gem. This is randomly generated, so we might have to do this. There it is. Okay, we got a switch, move forward. We are in a closed switch, so we're gonna to toggle it. Then we move back up to the for loop, we're not on a closed switch, so we jump down to the other clause, but we are on a gem, so we collect gem. Go ahead and rewind that and watch that again if you want to see how that worked. It's a good example of, of how the code flows through an if-else-if statement. Okay? You can see the branching going on in our code when the decisions are being made, whether the is on closed switch is true, It'll go ahead and execute that and then leave our if clause. And if it's not true, it'll go down to the else if is on gem clause. And if that's true, it'll execute that. If neither are true, it'll skip both of them. Okay. Okay. Uh, good job, everybody. We'll see you uh, next time.